Hello and welcome to How to Waste Online's video tutorial on how to classify your data using manual entry. We will also cover some technical scenarios you may apply to your work, including changing metal species and dealing with potentially hazardous hazard statements. After logging in, select New on the left-hand side of the homepage and New Job from the drop-down menu. This opens a window that allows us to choose the waste stream template we want to use. For this video, I am choosing the example waste stream template for soils that comes with the software. Please view the Creating a Waste Stream Template video to learn how to create your own unique waste stream template. After we have selected the waste stream template we want to use, the software opens the job details page. Make sure that you give the job a suitable name and add other details as necessary. On this page we are able to view and change the list of waste code. Your list of waste code should reflect a description of your waste as closely as possible. For this waste stream, the non-hazardous entry 17-05-04 and its mirror, the hazardous entry 17-05-03 star are used. The page also documents which classification engine you are using and the type of moisture correction that you may want to apply. Next, click on the determinants slash samples tab. To add a sample column, click Add Sample and give it its name. Looking down this list, we can see that some determinants have a little molecule symbol next to them. These are speciated determinants, mainly metals. Next to each metal, in curly brackets, is the default metal compound that will be used for the calculation. This default compound is either the most likely or the worst case compound for this waste stream. To give an example of what we mean, let's look at zinc. If I type in a value of 400 for zinc and click the classify all button, the cell will highlight in red indicating it is hazardous. We may preview the classification report for the sample by clicking the sample name and choosing classification report from the drop down. Here we can see the hazardous result has caused the list of waste code 170503 star to be chosen. The hazardous properties which have been triggered and the table documenting the substances that have been assessed. The data highlighted in pale yellow is data that the classifier is able to modify. We can see the metal and its compound are highlighted. To change this to a less worst case slash most likely compound, we would need evidence. If chromium-6 has been tested for and is too low in comparison to the zinc level, we can justify the change in metal species. Close the report window, and for this example, we will input a below limit of detection level into chromium-6. You may use the less than symbol for your limit of detection results. This will result in the cell being highlighted in grey to indicate this. Now if we click Zinc Chromate, here we can choose Manage Species from the drop-down menu. This brings up a window of the compounds for that metal in a worst case order descending down. As we have the justification, we can choose Zinc Sulfate as the next worst case scenario, citing our reason in the box below. If we click Classify All, we can see the zinc is no longer hazardous at 400 mg per kilogram, with a green tick next to the sample column indicating it's non-hazardous. Please do utilise the substance knowledge base in our help system, which documents useful information such as general industry uses and solubility for each compound. For example, zinc sulphate is fairly soluble, so we could consult our soluble sulphate concentration to see if there is enough to say that the compound would have been washed away if it was ever present. We can also see that the next compound, zinc chloride, is extremely soluble, whilst zinc phosphide reacts with water to form a gas. Therefore, we can settle on zinc oxide as the most reasonable slash worst case scenario. As the waste producer or holder of the waste, you should know more about where the waste has come from, the site history and any other conditions and should be factoring that in. For example, if you know or suspect that you have blue copper sulphate crystals underneath a concrete hard standing, then you should be using copper sulphate. To demonstrate the next feature, we will use TPH C6 to C40, the determinant used to assess an unknown oil. If we enter a value of 10 mg per kilogram and classify, we see that the cell is highlighted in orange with an orange star next to the sample name. This is what we call potentially hazardous, and you will get this result for any substance that may be flammable, oxidising, explosive, or may liberate toxic gases, i.e. H1, H2, H3, or H12. 
This is the result that causes the most concern for users, as you require either a hazardous or non-hazardous outcome, leaving these potentially hazardous hazard statements will result in the software choosing neither a hazardous or non-hazardous result. If we click the Tests tab, we can see an orange star presented next to the hazard statement which needs to be addressed. We can also see the threshold and percentage of all the possible hazard statements in this tab. In this particular case, we are dealing with HP3, flammable, flammable liquid. Click the orange star and a window will pop up. Here we have two options. If we were dealing with multiple samples presenting this hazard statement, we will click the Change Settings for All Samples button, where you input a limit to either make your samples non-hazardous or hazardous. Instead, we will click the grey cog icon, which will provide a window where we have the option to simply turn it into a hazardous or non-hazardous result, citing our reasons why. There may be various reasons why you turn a flammable hazard statement into a non-hazardous result. In this example, our reason is because our waste stream has no liquid phase, so the hazard property need not apply. Once we have input our reason, click the OK button. This will change the orange star into a grey question mark, showing the data has changed and we need to reclassify. Now we have a non-hazardous result, as the hazard property for flammable has been addressed. Finally, to generate your PDF waste classification report, click on the Export tab and choose Export Classification as PDF. This generates a PDF report and places a copy in the Documents Manager. The first page is a summary page, showing the project details, who did the work, a table with the outcomes for one or more samples, and the three appendices. Scrolling down to the second page, we have the classification report for our single sample. This is the same one we generated earlier on when we clicked to preview the classification report for our sample. Scrolling past the sample, we get to Appendix A, Classifier Defined and Non-CLP Substances. This appendix details any substances that have not come from the CLP, either added by us or by the user. Remember, the CLP only contains about 4,500 substances out of the millions of substances that you might come across. You can see that TPH, C6 to C40 is one of these substances, as it is a determinant coined by the Environmental Agency to assess unknown oils. Appendix B notes, rationale for selection of metal species. These are the reasons cited for any metal species used in the classification. Appendix C documents the software versions, version of WM3 version 1.1, on which regulations, datasets and classification engine is being used to produce the classification. These together with the rest of the report form a complete reference source and audit trail for anyone that needs to review or assess the classification. This concludes this video tutorial. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video.